叮叮叮叮叮叮叮，叮铃叮叮叮叮叮叮叮叮，叮铃叮叮叮叮叮叮叮叮。Wow, what an incredible bit of lute playing! An original recording from the 1500s, just stunning. Hello, and welcome to the first ever episode of the Final Couplet, a new podcast where you'll finally learn what the sonnets mean. A brief introduction of what I'll be doing in this podcast over the coming months, years. Decades. I'm going to look at a sonnet, often for the first time, and I'm going to read it in its raw form, as intended by the author. And then I'm going to break it down into my own words. And at the end, I'll give a reading of what I think it means. A quick disclaimer is that I have no. Knowledge of sonnets at all. My knowledge of Shakespearean vocabulary is poor, and I am by no means an expert. In fact, I would say I I'm the opposite. I am an amateur. Where better to start than an author who needs no introduction? <laughs> yes, you guessed it. It's William Shakespeare. The Bard himself, and where do you think I'll start in his vast body of work? Correct again, it's Sonnet One. The first sonnet he ever wrote. Let's have a listen, shall we? Sonnet One. From fairest creatures we desire increase, that thereby beauty's rose might never die. But as the riper should by time decease, his tender air might bear his memory. But thou, contracted to thine own bright eyes, feedest thy light's flame with self-substantial fuel, making a famine where abundance lies. Thyself thy foe, to thy sweet self too cruel. Thou that art now the world's fresh ornament and only herald to the gaudy spring. Within thine own bud buries thy content, and tender churl make us waste in begrudging. Pity the world, or else this glutton be, to eat the world's dew, by the grave and thee. Good grief! Hell of a sonnet that one. I've got a confession to make to start with. At the start, I said I would. Read the sonnet in its raw form, as intended by the author. But on this occasion, I had to make an edit to one word. I had a quick glance of the sonnet before I read it, and on line twelve there was a word that sounded very much like a racial slur. And upon further investigation, it's not. Meant to sound be racist, but I couldn't say it. I don't want to say it. It sounds horrible, so I swapped it out. And you know what? If any of you actually notice that, fair play. You're a big sonnet head. Well done. Have a have a medal. I've got to say. My initial thoughts are, it's a bit of a weird one. I'd say, when Shakespeare sat down to write this, I'm desperate to know who he was thinking about. Because I think the gist is, from what I'm reading, is that he is is talking to someone about why they should have. Kids, right? Children. So, the first few lines from "Fairest Creatures We Desire Increase," that thereby beauty's rose might never die, 
but as the riper should by time decease, his tender air might bear his memory. So he's saying, you know, look, most people, as they get older, will have a kid, so they'll look good, you know, in being their prime, and then what they'll do is they'll have a kid. And then, so when they get older, they can look at their kid and go, oh, yeah, he's he looks nice. I might not anymore, but I've still got my kid. And then he goes on. So, but thou, so now he's, he's on the, uh, he's on the attack. But thou, contracted to thine own bright eyes, feedest thy light's flame with self-substantial fuel, making a famine where abundance lies. So he's saying, but you, listen, you, you've got lovely eyes. You love your eyes. And they are nice, but all you do is talk about yourself, how good you look, and you're you're making a famine where but so you've got so much you know a bunch you're gorgeous, and you're making a famine of it because. Thyself, thy foe, to thy sweet self, too cruel. So you know you're being you you you're being a you're being cruel to yourself here. You don't get it, do you? That's what he's saying. Thou that art the world's fresh ornament and only herald to the gaudy spring, within thine own bud buriest thy content, and tender churl make his waste in begrudging. So he's saying. You're your own worst enemy here. Look at you. You're in your prime. But you've got to have a kid. You've got to have one. Because your beauty will die. Let me tell you that. So pity the world or else this glutton be to eat the world's dew by the grave and thee. And that, those last few lines, is, is, is the title of the podcast, the final couplet. So there you go. It's all tied in now, isn't it? And that is just sort of famously, I think, the final couplet sort of ties up what the sonnet means. So he, he, he rambles on for a little bit and then at the end he goes, all it is is this. All it means is this. Um, so I would say for me, the overarching thing is you're good looking, but you've got to have some kids. So I think it's important now to set the scene. Who's he talking to here? And for me, it's, it's a good friend of his. And I think, I think Shakespeare is jealous of him. Because this guy sounds gorgeous. And in my head at this point, Shakespeare has a kid. And he's going, oh no. I've, I've fucked it here. I've got a kid. And this guy's still, you know, roaming about lovely eyes and he doesn't have a kid and he's he's got the world in his hands in the palm of his hands so I think he's written this poem you know his wife's gone to bed and he's gone oh I'm gonna write this and I'm gonna meet him in the pub I'm gonna meet him in the pub and I'm gonna have a few pints with him and then I'm gonna get this out and read it to him and he is going to freak out. He's going to regret not having a kid. And this will make him have a kid. And then we can grow old together and we both have kids and complain about them. So now we've got our setting. So imagine it's a cold 
December night on the bank of the Thames in 15 whenever he wrote this sonnet. A young William Shakespeare bundled up walks into the nag's head and sits down for a pint with his good looking friend John. A few pints in, John goes, do you want one more, Bill? And Bill says, I'll go on then. And John goes up to the bar and orders two pints of mead. As he does this, William pulls out his sonnet from his back pocket. His hand is is quivering. He's worried about how this is going to be received by his friend John. John comes back, two pints of mead on the table. William says, John, I've been meaning to say, um, I hope you don't mind, but I've written a sonnet for you. And John's flattered. He goes, oh, that's nice, thanks. Thanks, Bill. And then William Shakespeare reads his first sonnet. Listen, most people have kids so that when they get old and ugly, they can look at their kid and think, oh, at least you're gorgeous. But you, John, you're always talking about your lovely eyes and how good looking you are. And you are. I'm not denying that. But what are you saving those good looks for? You'll grow old and ugly and then you won't even have a hot kid of your own to look at. In a nutshell, you're good looking but you should have a kid. Wow, I'd love to be a fly on the wall in that pub, wouldn't you? Anyway, that's the end of episode one. Thanks so much for listening. And I'll see you for the next sonnet. Goodbye. <laughs>